Hi, hello everyone, dear teachers, friends and students. Welcome to this video. In this video, we will learn a new poem that is The Stolen Boat. It's written by a famous poet, William Wordsworth. So, this poem mainly brings before us a beautiful experience of William Wordsworth as a boy. So, as we have so many beautiful experiences when we are we are in our childhood. So, this poem brings before us a beautiful moment. Those beautiful moments are brought in the form of a poem. Right, dear children, still if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel by pressing red color subscribe button which is on your screen. Right, Atniya Vidyarthi Rui, our Prabhupatham Barge, Nama video on Vishwani Manta Idre, Dive to Tham Screen Mail Yurta Kantha, Kemp one of the subscribe button and press Madi, Nama Pratyodh video the link of Khanat, the link of Mobile Ghe, link I put up there. So, either in the Tamanin Kutkul Halwar Vishwani Manta, Note both I did. So, Hagadre Tada Marte, now Kaviya Bhagge, Halwar Vishwani Manta, Kutkul Halwar Vishwani Manta, let's learn more, more and more about the poet William Wordsworth. Page number 1112. William Wordsworth, 1772 1850. So he was born in 1770 and he died in 1850. He is considered, William Wordsworth is considered one of the greatest poets of English literature. So he wrote beautiful poems. For that, he got name and fame in English literature. He is considered as one of the best, one of the finest poets in English literature, especially in Romantic period or in 18th century. Wordsworth and his friend S.T. Coleridge, by their joint publication of the lyrical ballads, became the harbingers of a romantic moment in English literature. So, 18th century is called Romantic Age because many people wrote about romantic things like nature, wildlife and beautiful moments of their life. So, in the same way, William Orsett had got a good friend. His name was S.T. Coleridge. His name was S.T. Coleridge. So, William Wordsworth and Coleridge both together published a joint, joint venture or a book called Lyrical Ballads. So, they published a book called Lyrical Ballads. What does it contain? So, it contains beautiful lyrics. It contains beautiful lyrics and it contains beautiful poems. It is a beautiful poem collection. Right, so which is which is what we can say, which is one of the finest collection of one of the finest books among those famous books. The, the episode of the stolen boat is based on the experience of Wordsworth's early wood or early boyhood days. So this poem or this episode in the poem brings before us or tells us a experience, a experience of Wordsworth when he was a boy. He tells here a naughty experience of word, experience of his boyhood. This is an extract from the book first of Wordsworth's great philosophical poem, The Prelude. So Wordsworth wrote a philosophical and a beautiful poem, long poem, that is the prelude. He wrote a beautiful book called The Prelude First. So this poem is taken from The Prelude First. So let's go to the poem. Let's go to the poem. So dear children, please open your textbook, page number 107. Are you ready, dear children? Let's go to the poem. The Stolen Boat, written by William Wordsworth. So listen to me carefully. So let's read it once, right? One summer evening, led by her, I found a little boat tied to a willow tree within a rocky cave, its usual home, straight unclosed her chain and stepping in, pushed from the shore. It was an act of stealth 
and troubled pleasure nor without voice without the voice of mountain echoes did my boat move on leaving behind her swell leaving behind her still on either side small circles glittering idly in the moon until they melted all in, into one track of sparkling light but now like one rose proud of his skills he to his a chosen point with an unswerving line i fixed my way upon the summit of a craggy ridge the horizon's utmost boundary far above was nothing but the stars and the gray sky she was an elfin finance lustily i dipped my oars into the silent lake and as i rose upon the stroke my boat went heaving through the water like swan when from behind that craggy steep still then the horizon's bound a huge peak black and huge as if the voluntary power instinct upreared its head i struck and struck again and growing still in stature the grim shape towered up between me and the stars and still for so it seemed with purpose of its own and measured motion like a living thing strode after me with the trembling oars i turned and through the silent road water stole my way back to the covert of willow tree then sorry there in her moony place i left my bark and through the meadows homeward went in grave and serious mood but after i had seen the spectacle for many years my brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being over my thoughts there hung a darkness call it solitude or black desolation no familiar shapes remained no pleasant images of trees of sea or sky no colors of green for green fields but huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men move slowly through the mind by day and when it trouble to my dreams so it's a beautiful poem let's study let's learn let's enjoy it so once our poet went to hill side went to mountain side so the season was summer the season was summer season the time was evening i found so i mean here the poet found a little boat so there was a little boat as you can see as you can see in your picture as you can see it in your picture there the poet saw or he found a little boat which was tied to a willow tree willow tree is a tree where that tree is grown near the water its boughs or twigs are flexibly grown because it is a tree which is grown near water nirna samipadalli velitakkanta one gida willow tree so it was tied to willow tree which was tied to willow tree a little boat was tied to willow tree within a rocky cave its usual place so to keep it safe such little boats are kept in between the rocks it is called rocky cave the poets of the boat little boat was safe in in between rocks or in rocky cave and its usual home so its usual home usually little boats are kept in between the rocks so please underline its metaphor what we can say its its metaphor this figure of speech metaphor please underline that line which said within a rocky cave its usual home so here boats that little boat is stayed is kept in a 
place with that place is called rocky cave that place is compared to rocky cave which is that comparison is understood or we can say hidden comparison is there that's why it is metaphor illi a boat irthakkanta sthalavanna ya yavudakke holislagide andre rocky cave kalli nindu irthakkanta ondu guhe aagara kallinalli kallige holislagide so please underline it's a metaphor straight i unloosed her chain and stepping in so slowly the poet boy william went to that boat little boat and he freed unloosed means he freed that boat which was tied with the chain and stepped in slowly he stepped in please underline that like i unloosed her chain it's a personification again one more one more figure of speech that is personification here her chain her means here boat boat is non living thing and it is used as as if a living thing i unloosed means the poet william freed her chain boat chain boat chain so that's why it is personification nirjeeva vastugalanna sajeeva vastu ante naam ಪರಿಗಣಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಪರ್ಸೋನಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ಪ್ರೇಕ್ಷಣಾಕಾರ ಅಂತ ಕರೀತೀವಿ ಐ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಇನ್ ಇವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬೋಟ್ ಪುಷ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಶೋ ಇ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಶೋ ಟು ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಥೆಫ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ it was an act of theft adu kallatana ant heli avanu anisittu that is stolen boat the the theft or the boat which was taken as a act of theft so here it is in the first stanza what we have seen we have seen that in the summer evening the boy william found there there was a little boat and little boat which was tied to willow tree and that boat was in rocky cave and he unloosed or he freed that boat and he went inside and he took that boat to the water he wanted to take that boat on the water and troubled pleasure so he did not get much much pleasure with much happiness because he thought that it was an act of stealth theft not without twice so without making any noise slowly he went there means silently he went in a boat on the water of mountain echoes did my boat to move on as the boat moved on by oars oar means put a boat on but by making oars by using oars he tried to move move in the water so that uh, sound that wa- that voice echoed in the mountains so it echoed that such a silence was there alli a dhoni enaktittu boat hogtakanta dhoni a mountain ge prati dhoni aagta ittu living behind her still so he was leaving the water behind with the help of oars he was taking the boat on either side small circles glittering idly in the moon so small circles were created by taking oars so those small circles were glittering in the sun as if in the sun and sun is glit as if sun is glittering in the water and water circles are glittering in the it's not sun moon moon sorry so water circles are glittering in the moon so there was silent moon beautiful moon was there until they melted all into one track so all the circles were melted into one track all the circles were made in one track one day track ulige ella circle anna konnege san san circle hoge onde circle aayitu andre he was moving so they melted all in one track please underline that is also metaphor they means here circles are compared to one track circle on one track ge polislagide adakkagi enu andre idu kuda metaphor a sparkling light they melted all into one track of sparkling light but now like 
one who rose proud of his skill to reach a chosen point so he was growing he was growing with the oars mundu tegedkondu hogudu avutana tegedkondu hogudu so he was rowing puttakta akta adu boatana mundu tegedkondu hogta idda so he was rowing the boat he was proud of his skill so he was proud of rowing that to reach chosen point so he wanted to reach one chosen point one selected point with unswearing line i fixed my view upon the summit of craggy ridge so he wanted to reach certain point that was craggy ridge so please underline from like one who was proud of his skill to reach a chosen point with an unswearing line i fixed my view upon the summit of craggy ridge so this is one more figure of speech that is simile it is also simile so here that rowing is compared to that rowing and reaching uh, that point is compared to craggy ridge the horizons utmost boundary so craggy ridge is horizons utmost boundary means last boundary of horizon horizon means sky utmost boundary far above it so it was far above was nothing but the stars and the gray sky what was there what was there in the origin so you can be asked what question here what was there the origin there we find beautiful stars and gray sky she was an elfin finance lustily so please underline she was an elfin finance and it's again personification she means here little boat is compared to elfin finance elfin finance is compared to the little boat then what do you mean by elfin finance please learn it is there, it is there in glossary small fairy like boat so elfin finance means fair fine or we can say small or fairy like boat fairy like boat such boats can be found in fairy tales that little boat is compared to elfin finance both were uh non living things that's why it is called personification and uh, this is very important line and uh, can be asked for your examination right i dipped my oars into silent lake dipped means he rowed that uh, boat with his oars oars andre kadaganna munda sand boat anna munda saksilike balasthakanta ondu bidra bidrin maadakkattakanta oar puttu ante karithivi adu adrinda hogtidanne kavi and as i rose upon the stroke my boat so he was rowing with his boat by some oar strokes went heaving through the water like a swan so how does he go so he went like a swan please underline that line also it is also simile so he was going the bird swan like the bird swan when from behind that craggy steep still then so he was going still there was a craggy steep small steep was there so he was going through the horizon spawn huge peak black and huge so there was a huge peak huge mountain it was black and huge huge means big so le dodda agirtakkanta on betta ide aa betta balashtu kappa agirtakkanta betta totta tudiyalli vandirtakkanta betta and if the voluntary power instinct so he was going well voluntarily unreared its head i struck and struck again so it was rearing unreared means as if there was a person it was it was uh, seeming like it was looking like as if there was a person and growing still in stature the grim shape again we can see personification here reared its head i struck struck again this is also personification and growing still in stature the grim shape towered up between me and the stars and still so there was only some things with him that was stars and me stars and the poet so both were going and still for it seemed 
with the purpose of its own. So he thought that uh, there is a purpose of uh, enjoying and measured motion like a living thing. Again, measured motion. One more, please see. It's again uh, one more figure of speech. Measure, measured motion. M M. That is alliteration. So it is. So if you find repetition of consonant sound at least two times, just initial stage or starting point of particular word. So that is called measured M motion M. So if two times such consonants are repeated, so it is called alliteration. Shabda the model is finished. Yada sala consonant repeat adre yada kono alliteration ante kari thi. So underline this again. Complete one more line. Measured motion like. A living thing. So it is simile again. Full line is simile and half line is alliteration. So that measured motion is compared to living thing. So that going or uh, rowing the boat is compared to living thing. Strode after me. So he was rowing with a trembling oversight turn. So he was going with the trembling. The whole water is trembling. It looks like. And through the silent water stole my way. So he was stealing that boat in silent water. Back to covert the willow tree. So after uh, com completing his rowing or his uh, what we can say boating, so he again brought that little boat to willow tree and he tied it. Agella, the yellow the regard on the portali in Matana Matta, Botan Tandu, a willow tree cut the net. There in mooring place, I left my bark. Bark means again boat. Bark means boat. So again, if uh, he tied that boat to the willow tree, so he left that boat, a little through the meadows homeward. So went three meadows. Meadows means grasslands. In grave and serious mode. So he went in serious mode. But after I had seen the spectacle for many days. So after seeing this spectacle. This sight spectacle means beautiful sight. He did not enjoy other things. He did not enjoy other things. My brain. My brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense. So his mind always thinking those beautiful moments. Those beautiful things which he saw in the nature of that evening. Of unknown modes of being over my thoughts. So, so many thoughts. He remembered so many thoughts when he was rowing in the boat. There hung a darkness, call it solitude. So, there he found solitude. Solitude means loneliness. One, the person of being oneness. Solitude. So while he was in solitude, he, was, he remembered them and he was enjoying them. Our blank desertation, no familiar shapes, so he doesn't find any other things enjoyable. Remain no pleasant images of trees, of sea or sky, no colors of green fields. After enjoying these beautiful uh, moments, he did not find anywhere such beauty. But huge and mighty forms that do not have, like living men. So please underline, this is also simile. Huge and mighty forms that do not live, living like living men. Huge and mighty forms means huge and mighty mountains that do not live. Actually, they do not live. They live like men. Manushya Rantane, oh, Jeevistha this is called uh, huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men. It's perfect. I mean, it's a uh, simile. Like is used. So it's a simile. Again, huge and mighty forms that do not live. It is personification. Moved slowly through the mind. So it was still enjoying remembering those man, those experiences. By and by day and went. And were a trouble to my dreams. So he was enjoying whenever he gets time. And that those dreams troubled him. Means 
So he remembered those beautiful experiences again and again and he was enjoying. So this is a beautiful poem. In, in a simple manner, I tried my best to explain. So dear children, please read it once or twice and uh, find right new words, meanings which, which are given in the section called glossary. So try to answer all the questions which are given at the end of the poem and try to write the sum, I mean, a summary in simple manner. Hmm? RC question can be asked, summary question can be asked, too much questions can be asked, especially figures of speech questions can be asked, simile, personification, metaphor, alliteration, at least one can be asked. Figure of speech will one question and compulsory killer. They can move on to figure of speech will one zero in the one that no killer. So, dear children, read it once. So, thank you everyone for uh, being with us and enjoying and learning together a beautiful poem The Stolen Boat, which was written by William Wordsworth. So, let's meet in the next video, dear children. Still, if you have not subscribed our channel, Please subscribe our channel by pressing red colored subscribe button which is on your screen. So thank you everyone for being with us. Let's meet in the next video with the new topic. So thanks a lot.